Hi everyone, welcome again. In the last video, we saw how to use post mapping annotation. We also saw how to consume the data from the request using at the rate request body annotation. And then we saw how to return the response using our own custom model, which was the user response. In this video, we will cover one more thing related to this one, which is response entity. Sometimes we need to return more information. We need to have more control over the response that we are returning. So instead of returning the plain model, in this case user response, we may want to return the HTTP status codes or different HTTP statuses. To achieve this, we can use response entity. What response entity does, response entity class has different methods, static factory methods that can manipulate or that can be used to provide more information related to HTTP status codes. So for example, if you see here, there is a method status which can be used to pass a certain HTTP status code. Then we have OK methods which implicitly set the HTTP status 200 means a request was successful. So what we did in the last video, we can achieve the same thing using the OK method which accepts the body as well. So we can pass this response to OK method like this. And then instead of returning the model directly, we can return the new response entity like this and now we need to change the return type the response entity of type user response all right let's try let's try the new change so the server is up now and let's retry the same request and we see no error no change we still see the status 200 the id and the time so that means we are still passing the same user information back to the user but this time we are using response entity to do the same thing now this can be useful for example instead of a success response we need to pass the error response maybe something happened we couldn't process the request uh, the user somehow we were not able to create the user so instead of the okay response this time what we can do we can say for example, we can use bad request, not found, or we can set a certain status like HTTP status dot uh, bad request. And if we rerun the API now, and test the same call again, and this time we don't see any output in the console but notice the status has now been changed to 400 bad request and remember this is the same thing that we set up here while returning the response so in similar use cases where we need more control over the status or the messages or the payload that we are passing back to the client we can use the response entity so that's all for now stay tuned for next videos thanks for watching